We are set for tip-off inside the Joyce Center at Purcell Pavilion. 18th meeting between Notre Dame and Virginia Tech. Starting lineup presented by your local Toyota dealer, Ben Allen Lubin, the freshman from Orlando. Made his first career start on Wednesday, responded with 13 points. You better believe he's back out there for the tip-off. Though it was won by Grant Basile, coming off 33 on Wednesday night in the Hokies' loss to BC. Hokies have won four straight against the Irish, and an early foul going on Leshevsky inside guarding Justin Mutz. And that's tough. Leshevsky, he is vital to Notre Dame's offensive plan. But you take a look at Virginia Tech's starting lineup. Justin Mutz, number 25, who drew that foul, he's their jack-of-all-trades player. They run offense through him. His numbers this season have been spectacular. 13-7 and 4.5. And he's a guy to watch out for. Scoring double figures each of the last four games for Coach Mike Young who has been pretty successful against Coach Mike Gray. Young 4-1 against Notre Dame since coming to Blacksburg as the leader of the Hokies. In a travel called on MJ Collins. Broke his nose last Saturday, but no worse for wear wearing that mask. He took a shot to the lower tip of the nose, and Mike Young was bemoaning, why doesn't the mask cover the entire nose? There's something to be said there. But you'll notice both teams will try to exploit mismatches. When you're playing Notre Dame, the ball movement's usually really good. And Leshevsky, he is always in attack mode as he gets his first two. Coming off 16 points in 38 minutes on Wednesday. Leshevsky is 150th game. Dane Goodwin is 151st, most in Notre Dame history. Mutz banks in the three. Banks are open on Saturday for Mr. Mutz. It's his first made three since the 4th of January. I'm not mad at the set at all. Little handoff and then a roll replace action with Hunter Couture, the team's best shooter, one of the ACC's best shooters. Coming off the screen looking to fire Justin Mutz. He took his turn. One thing about both these teams, they both do a great job taking care of the basketball. Saw the early travel call, but no turnovers since. Hunter Couture. John Padula is the leading scorer for the Hokies, and he had a rough game on Wednesday, so you knew he'd look for offense early today. Well, that's Notre Dame. You have to communicate switches better. And with a guy like Sean Padula that's always looking to score, communication is crucial. You need to, you need to call out those switches better if you're Notre Dame. Lubin inside, counted, plus the foul. Nice move, Ben Allen Lubin. Really strong on the interior. The freshman from Florida going to work. Gets low post position. Basile, he's in the way, doesn't matter. I'm stronger than you, Ben Allen Lubin, with the end one. Ben Allen Lubin, consensus, top 120 player in the country in last season's recruiting class. As the season's gone on, Evan, he has gotten substantially better and more comfortable on the floor. Three-point play ties it up. Also gave Basile his first personal foul. Mutz trying to give Leshevsky his second. Unable to do so, and the Hokies turn it over. That's a good job, Leshevsky being physical on the interior. Before we go too much further, Terrence, let's get to our keys to the game presented by your local Ford dealer. If you're Virginia Tech, you better guard that three-point line. Notre Dame has five guys on the floor at one time most of the game that can knock it down. But if you're Notre Dame, compete, compete, compete. It was one of the most physical shoot-arounds I've seen in my time around the game of basketball. Full court one-on-one. -on -one. Mike Bray trying to send a message, especially on the defensive end. Mazzilli off the mark from three. And we were told by... Notre Dame Sports Information Director, the Notre Dame Radio play-by-play -play voice, Tony Simeone. This is not normal as we sat here courtside this morning and watched the Irish bang their way up and down the floor. Intense one-on-one -on -one defensive battles, and Mike Bray was screaming at the defender to play with some attitude. Well, they've started in the manner in which they're playing offense right now. He, he was visibly perturbed with his team's effort early. As the shoot-around started going, I mean, he became happier and happier. Didn't talk to us. Uh, I mean, I think that last loss. He didn't talk to 
the local media after the game on Wednesday in Atlanta. He sent Hamlet Tibbs as assistant. He had Anthony Weish handle the pregame on radio today. I mean, he's in a different mode right now, and Hammonds knocks down the three. Marcus Hammond from deep. Marcus Hammond, he, he played for Greg Paulus last season at Niagara. He's a guy that can score a lot in a hurry. While he hasn't been the scoring threat for Notre Dame that he was at Niagara last year, he's just another point guard that can handle the rock. Justin Mutz going up and under, doesn't get the roll. And I think they got Lynn Kidd for the push on the rebound action. First on Kidd. I love Hammond's balance. You're doing a baseline out of bounds. You get the ball in. Look at his feet coming off. Patient, square, fire away, and finish. Marcus Hammond, excellent shot. His 30th three of the season, but at Niagara, I mean, he built over 200 threes on his resume. Six straight for Notre Dame since they trailed 5-2. Interesting day of college basketball well underway. Delighted you've joined us here at Purcell Pavilion. Nate Leszewski's three off the back iron, no good. And then Jay Collins pulls down the rebound. And I like that defensive possession right there for Virginia Tech. Why? They're pushing the catches out a little bit further, making Notre Dame operate further away from the basket. And that decreases your percentages from three. MJ Collins rising up. Rebound tipped out of bounds. Last touch by Kidd. And we'll get ourselves a timeout. Four minutes, 20 seconds in. Interesting start. Irish with the early 8-5 lead. But after today, there'll be just two more left. To the 23rd year head coach, the winningest coach in program history, who announced five games to go that he will step down after this season concludes one of the legends not not only in this conference the ACC but had terrific success at the Big East too. Uh, really helped out with the transition into the Atlantic Coast Conference which helps but Mike Bray one of the most jovial guys even though he wasn't necessarily all that jovial today Evan. he had a different mindset he was trying to get his guys ready to play, which I respect. And you could see the fire is still there. Sure. Now, who knows what's going to happen next year? Cormac Ryan for three extends the lead. But I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Bray sits on the beach for a year. And then we just kind of casually see his name start popping up again in coaching circles. This is a bold into the future prediction as the drive wouldn't go, but the stick back is there for Lynn Kidd. I like the aggressiveness by Justin Mutz to attack Nate Lejewski on the perimeter. Lejewski, for what he is on offense, sometimes defensively, he can struggle keeping the ball in front, but he's so good Beautiful on pass. offense. Lubin to Lejewski. Oh, nice spin move. Nifty. And the foul on Van Allen Lubin, the freshman. Kid has given the Hokies a spark here off the bench. Yeah, but Notre Dame, like we said earlier, they're going to attack mismatches a little high low. You're going to front the post, make that entry from the top. Lejewski, nice work, sealing his man up the floor. But Lynn Kidd, look at this baseline spin. Quick, effective. And he's at the free throw line. Free throw bounces off the rim a couple times and falls through for the Clemson transfer. J.J. Starling into the game. 22 starts this year, but J.J. coming off the bench for the third time. Averages 12 points a game for the Irish. It was a McDonald's All-American. I think there were some people that were expecting him to be more point guard than two guard, but Starling's wired to score, and he's got a big athletic body where he has the ability to finish on the inside. I do like the move. A little bit bigger in the starting lineup when you bring Starling off the bench. Looking to attack in his first possession, and his three was off the mark, rebounded by Hunter Couture. Neither Couture or Dane Goodwin have taken a shot in the first six minutes here today. So maybe it's that time for Hunter to find his offense. He'll dish it. 
as the defense collapsed. Padula back wow. to Couture in the quarter. Beautiful ball My movement goodness. leads to three. Excellent ball movement. Third side offense. If you're the Virginia Tech Hokies, you love that action offensively. The help side moves. They get lost. And Hunter Couture, you can forget about it, the best three-point shooter in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Yeah, averaging right around 42% on the season. This is big-time offensive ball movement, Evan. You attack the you attack Lejewski off a switch. The ball moves. That's a difficult pass. But whenever you're undisciplined on shot fakes and so forth, you can find guys because you get out of position. And Hunter Couture, I mean, forget about it. 41.8% from three on the season. Can't leave him that open. Now 43 threes away from becoming the Hokies all-time program leader. It'd be a lot to ask him to get there by the end of the season. But uh, he has another year of eligibility if he wants. He could come back and break AJ or uh, AD Vasayo's record. Five to shoot. Inside, Matt Zona comes up short with a hook. Mutz going at Lesheski again. Mutz pretty well defended, but it's Elijah Poteet getting the loose ball, and the Hokies come up empty. And that's a matchup based substitution. Mate, Matt Zona doesn't play a ton of minutes, but Mike Bray saw Elijah Poteet enter the game and offensively both guys are a little bit limited it's a way for him to steal some minutes field goal attempt for zona that last trip was just his 11th field goal Ooh. attempt of the season a guy much more involved in the offense cormac ryan his second bucket today i love cormac ryan's game his ability to create off the bounce off the off the catch he's equally dangerous just a terrific shooter Matt zona can't do that padula went down Fouls on Zona. How about this? You're going to drive baseline, pull up over the top. Look at this action. Go away. There's a switch. Step back. Knock through. Look at this. He's too small. Got to guard that man, Cormac Ryan. As the captain or president of the Cormac Ryan fan club, are you accepting new applicants? I'll take whoever's willing to jump on board. I mean, so shifty with the ball in his hands. Good size, shoots over the top. I mean, he's had some major performances. 30-plus at Cameron Indoor last season. I mean, the guy can score in so many different ways. John Camden getting some first-half minutes. Padula rising up. Three in and out. The rebound for J.J. Starling. Darling looking for Lubin, and Basili had a foot on the end line. It will be Notre Dame ball when we return. Eight minutes down, tight game. Irish with the three-point lead. It would appear that as he finishes his string at the helm of the Irish, but since he announced he would be departing. It has become somewhat customary to gift the legend an object, and Whit Babcock, the director of athletics, sending this piece of hokey stone, which represents what Virginia Tech is built on, a foundation that we're proud of. This is Whit, Whit Babcock's letter to Mike Ray, assembled on brotherhood, loyalty, leadership, sacrifice, service, honor, and duty. The, the letter wrote, uh, Red, Coach Bray, you are rock solid and something special. Congratulations. He heck, of, heck of a career, Mike Bray. Here's a rock. See, that's that's the letter you would have written. Whit, <laughs> yeah, Whit, Whit exactly Babcock right. wrote something far more <laughs> eloquent and poignant for the moment. you got to call a rock a rock. Cormac Ryan oh. has three more. Cormac Ryan gets one in the mid-range to start out the game. It comes out of the break with a bucket. I'm telling you, one of my favorite players in the conference. Third three of the game for Notre Dame. Hunter Couture to answer. Got it. Come on. Hunter Couture, his feet are set. Forget about it. Hit his last two. One in the corner, one coming off a screen. Big-time shooters, runaway threes like that. Not an easy shot to make. Oh, wow, Hunter Couture stronger than Nate Lejewski. 
What'd you see? Well, there was a switch that occurred, and he really embraced the physicality, and Lajewski wasn't on balance. And what ends up happening? Couture Gets picks up second. his second. Yeah, that, and that's a big foul because he starts off the game so well, two of two from three. You need him in this game. Mike Young leaves him on the floor with 11.20 to play in the half. Lashewski looking for the dive, but Mutz was anticipating it well. The first Notre Dame turnover. Irish, second fewest turnovers per game in the nation. Only Penn State, like Shrewsbury's Nittany Lions, average fewer turns per game than the Irish. Battle for the board, won by Basili, and he's fouled. And we'll stay at this end as Lubin picks up his second. And if you're Ben Allen Lubin, you have to do your early work. You're giving up about two, maybe three inches in height to Grant Vasily. Get in his legs and push him out towards the ACC before that ball gets there. Camden. And a good rebound there, pulled down by Dane Goodwin, who still has not taken a shot. Game's first nine plus minutes. Little step through and unable to finish. Starling, though, somehow discovers the rebound. Gotta guard him. Lashevsky, dagger. My goodness. If there's one thing Lashevsky can do, it's knock down, catch and shoot threes. His third bucket of the game. Off to a quick start. Another guy with over 200 threes in his career. Seven points. Unable to answer this time. Vasily, but Mutz on the glass. Back up and in off the glass. He's just tough. He's just tough. That he is. And he can guard so many different spots. Here, guarding Dane Goodwin out of the perimeter. I mean, a guy that's just so versatile in how he can help your team win. Lajewski's feeling saucy. From the edge of the logo, Lajewski drills another. Like that offensive possession, get into the paint, maintain play off two feet. You can find a big fella outside when that defense collapses. Lajewski's feeling some kind of way early in this game. Already in a double figures, he's got 10. Vasily with a left hand, that was nifty. Vasily has 12 family members here today. Transfer from Wright State from Pewaukee. Pewaukee, Wisconsin, about a three hour drive for the Vasily family. Dad Michael, his mom Lisa. And this is an interesting game for Basili. Lashewski had a little bit of a heat check. Basili was basically down to Virginia Tech and Notre Dame as his final two choices when he was making the decision of where he would go. He became a hokey, and he's got back-to-back -back hoops to bring Virginia Tech back within two. I feel like this game is just flooded with guys who can score inside and out. Basili, after going for, what, 33 in his last con contest, yeah. I mean, he's one of those guys that can beat you from so many different spots. Cormac Ryan lost the hand over covers. Goodwin's first shot circles around and out. This is when Sean Padula is good. Look, you have a ball screen coming. Ooh, right to left. Vasily fakes it, dishes, it's a charge. Number two on Grant Vasily, so that's two on Couture. I beg your pardon, they just uh, make it number one on Vasily, so they gave one of the earlier ones to someone else. That's what happens, look at Dane Goodwin getting out outside, well outside the charge circle actually. That, that's where playing off two feet is so beneficial. Evan, get there, you finish. Finish with a nice bounce pass. Shouldn't right there, makes it easier for you. Shouldn't have corrected myself. That was, in fact, his second foul, as I thought initially. Here's another foul. Padula reaching in. Number one on Sean, who also has family here today. Ferentz, Bernadette, and Dom are in the house. The Padula family is huge. Sean has eight brothers and sisters. God bless his mother. I have two kids, and I'm not sure how, how I can keep up. I've got two as well, <laughs> and that feels like the right amount for me and you. A lot of great athletes in the Padula family.
State champs in a variety of sports coming out of Edmond, Oklahoma. Nasheski back to the line. Ten points already for Nate. If the rest of his family is like Sean Padula, that's a competitive household. Sure I, I, I think one of the things that gets lost, kids play so much basketball these days. They're playing summer AAU for so long. They kind of lose the ability to be competitive every stink game. That's not the case with Sean Padula. Got a lot of dog in it. Padula using the poteet screen. Collins in the corner. Back up top. Padula, tough fadeaway. Goes. My goodness. Stop and pop. Sean Padula. What a move and what a finish. Both teams shooting 50% or better in this first half. Goodwin lost it. And a travel is called. It'll be Hokies ball when we come back. We are broadcasting today with heavy hearts after the really devastating news last night about Jeff Charles, who was the voice of the Hokies for five years and then spent the last three decades as the voice of the East Carolina Pirates. Jeff traveled to New Orleans with the Pirates and tragically passed away. We send our thoughts and prayers to Jeff's family, and we will miss you, Jeff. You were one of the greats. Jeff Charles, gone too soon at 70 years old. Two good shooting basketball teams sharing the floor today. Not a huge surprise that we have seen both light it up early. Well, this is a game we weren't exactly expecting a ton of defense, but you still got to get out there and contest. But regardless, whenever you're able to attack the paint, make that defense collapse. These are two teams that can really shoot the ball from the perimeter. And it's not just the guards. It's Nate Lejewski. It's Grant Basile. You see the numbers. Both teams can really shoot the rock. Two-point lead for the Irish, who've made five of their nine triples. And that Virginia Tech stat at 35% is a little bit skewed because Hunter Couture, who's the best three-point shooter in the Atlantic, Atlantic Coast Conference, missed six games. So you throw him in there, it changes that number pretty substantially. They have played better with him back, although Coach Young said even when he was out, everybody wanted him to come back, saying he's not a, a cure-all for all of our problems. And that was on display. A disappointing loss to Boston College on Wednesday. The Eagles were pasted at home by Kevin Keats' Wolfpack today. Leshevsky, three more! Hey, Leshevsky has been terrific here in the early going, and he just moves so well without the basketball. Marcus Hammond drives right into the paint. He continues to move his feet. Defense gets lost. That's not one you can lose. Padula's response off the iron, no good. Leshevsky with 15 points in 13 minutes. He's calling for it again. Sets a screen, now trying to post up Collins inside. He's got the mismatch. Leshevsky in and out. Padula guarded by Goodwin. Looking for a high-low at the other end, and... Is that going to be on Leshevsky? If it is, it's number two. And they call it on Hammond instead. A little too physical in the post, but you'll see how the spacing changes with Elijah Poteet's at the top of the key. Leshevsky can just hang in there around the ACC. Makes that pass a lot more difficult because they're not worried about Poteet's shooting ability from beyond the arc. But regardless, Hammond a little too physical. Try to push him out, but keep your hands up to where the officials can see him. Mutz, rebounded by Poteet, although Goodwin poked it away. It will stay with the Hokies. You know, after the loss on Wednesday, Terrence, Mike Young was asked by the local media, what, what still gives you confidence that you can turn it around and put a little run together? He said, well, I've seen us be really good. Yeah. I, know, I know that we have it. We got seven left. Let's go play. Well, it's certainly been in spurts, and I think the biggest thing was injuries started to pile up and when Hunter Couture went out they went one of four I, I mean he is that kind of player for this team not just as a shooter but he's the team's best perimeter defender as well Mutz drawn contact Goodman thought he played pretty good defense but he'll get whistled for the foul 
Coach Bray thought he traveled. He would be able to take another look at it. It wasn't a travel. Little too physical on the drive. But you want to put pressure on the rim against this Notre Dame team because they have some guys that don't necessarily move their feet all that well laterally. So what happens if you're able to make them collapse and they don't have a true rim protector, then you can find different ways to find open shots on the perimeter. But Mutt staying aggressive, getting to the cup, he's rewarded for it. Mutz at his third school, but what a player he's been for Virginia Tech after a year at High Point and a stop in Mike Bray country, Delaware. Hammond working on Padula. Good defense. Look how the ball's popping, though, for Notre Dame. If that ball moves, they have enough shooters and playmakers to where they can get some things going offensively. Problem is, sometimes it sticks, and that's when they struggle creating looks. Well defended possession here from Virginia Tech and it leads to a Notre Dame turnover. Collin hangs in the air and banks it in. How about that? The, North, the freshman from North Carolina playing through a multitude of injuries. Oh, excuse me. He went to high school in North Carolina. He's from South Carolina. Thank you for that correction, Evan. A little nudge on the shoulder there. Over South Carolina. But played at Combine Academy, which is in Lincolnton, North Carolina. As Hammond knocks down a nice jumper off the bounce. And actually, Patrick Wessler, who's redshirting for Virginia Tech, his father is the AD at Combine Academy, which was started by Jonah Bays and Trevor Booker, who were my teammates in school. How about that? I saw the Wesslers at the airport yesterday. Kid. Kicks it. Collins sticks it. Man, he has just improved, improved, improved. If he's able to knock down shots from the perimeter, my goodness, you're not going to be able to take him off the floor. He's such a quality defender and rebounder. He adds that perimeter shot. I mean, just so valuable to the Hokies. Two teams combined, 11 for 21 from three. Marcus Hammond. The defensive effort has certainly picked up for Virginia Tech. Staying in front of the basketball, and whenever you're not able to create easy looks or closeouts, that's when Notre Dame sometimes can struggle to get good looks on the perimeter. Hokie is still playing with Bazilli on the bench with two fouls. Couture continues to play through two fouls. Nice pass again. Mutz the assist. Kid the layup, and the Hokies take the lead. How about that pass by Mutz? Little Barkley dribble, drives, doesn't get it, turns his back. Two guys come. Excellent look. In and out, Zona and Kidd wrestling for the board. Jump ball will keep it with Notre Dame on the alternating possession. And Virginia Tech, they're off and running, and that's a good thing for their offense. Get a rebound and go. MJ Collins, forget it. That's a quick finish. Virginia Tech, better and better as the game goes on. Up one here in South Bend. Sunny, no snow on the ground. Not the typical February weather here in Indiana. 8-2 run for the Hokies. They've won in this building before, including most recently a couple years ago, an 11-point win January of 2021. Okay, so, so Virginia Tech went over this inbounds play, I want to say 10 times this morning at shoot-around. Dane Goodwin's trying to come off a stagger screen and create something, and they are completely blocking his path. Mike Young thrilled with his guys at the end of that possession. Mike Young matching wits with Mike Bray here today. Justin Mutz, another three. And that's too easy. Dang good when you've got it. You do have to close out short, but you at least have to make Justin Mutz uncomfortable out on the perimeter. He literally hadn't made a three in over a month since January 4th. And he's two for three from deep this afternoon. Goodwin. Pirouette rejected by Mutz. Loose ball picked by Camden. Justin Mutz defensively is so good and so strong. 
he can guard outside. And when you take him on the interior, you can forget it. He puts his chest on you. That's tough. And he, Mr. Collins, is feeling some kind of way. Mike Ray needs a timeout. The Hokies on a 13-2 run. They've scored the last 10 points in the game. And the Irish say, let's talk it over. Justin Muntz. I mean, you need perimeter shooting. This is Sean Padula creating something for his teammates. They good when you got to get out there and contest a little harder. Mutz, that's his second one of the game. He doesn't hit many, but he did that time. But defensively, this is where Mutz thrives. Look at his verticality. Stays there. Puts his chest on. Blocks the shot. Virginia Tech's defense has picked up over the course of the last eight minutes or so. And Mr. Collins, a little in and out. Tough fadeaway jumper over the top. The freshman from Clover, South Carolina, with a tough bucket. His season high, Collins, just 11. He's got seven already in the half. Meanwhile, Mutz has already tied his season high with threes. 10-0 run for Virginia Tech over the last buck 58. And in Notre Dame, they've been prone to, to scoring droughts throughout the course of this season. They'll compete, compete, compete. They'll go four minutes without scoring a basket. That's what happened in their last contest. I mean, the last nine minutes of their game against Georgia Tech, it was it was tough to get one. It's tough to create a look for teammates. Notre Dame's been good for 75% of games most times. It's just that consistency and how they can get good looks they've struggled with. Starling, baseline, beautiful move. And an even better pass from the top of the key. The skip puts Starling in a closeout. And if there's one thing J.J. Star Starling excels at, it's his ability to put it on the deck and finish around the rim. Let's call for the travel. Well, I'm not sure I agree with that call. But regardless, the offense for Notre Dame out of that timeout, little horn set. Nate Lejewski sees the help side on the bottom at Starling. Attacks the closeout and finishes. An excellent athlete is the freshman from New York. Final two minutes of this first half. Packed with great shooting, solid offense. Two teams really desperate for a win. Putting it mildly. Starling has another bucket. You see why he was so highly recruited. J.J. Starling, his ability to get to the cup and finish at tough angles. Big guards help things work, and Justin Mutz likes the three-point line today. Oh, Poteet on the glass, surrounded by white jerseys. There's one hokey. And he'll get to the line. What hustle from the junior transfer from Rice, Elijah Poteet. Originally from North Carolina, Mike Young told me he, he recruited him a little bit out of high school, but goes to Rice, has a big time impact on the glass, and he's just another rugged big fella for Virginia Tech that you can throw at different lineups depending on who you're playing. Terrence, there's a, a scoring discrepancy right now between the official stats monitor and the, the stadium scoreboard. We've got what the stadium is showing here at Purcell Pavilion, but uh, I and the stats monitor has 3835. So that's something that needs to get sorted out here. I'm sure it will at halftime. Lasheski inside for two more. He's got 17 and a half. On pace for 40 today. And Virginia Tech continues to switch, so he's going to get some looks around the basket. As long as he doesn't get that many looks from the three point line, I think that's where he can hurt you more. But regardless, he's been terrific so far. Won't fall for Poteet, but he will get back to the free throw line where he went one for two a possession ago. Virginia Tech switching one through five. And Lajewski. I mean, you come across, that is a heck of a pass to Lajewski, who's posting up and holds his seal and finishes. He is a high-level scorer, but today especially so. 
Timeout called by the Hokies. They use it or lose it. Meanwhile, hopefully they'll get this uh, scoring discrepancy sorted out over at the uh, table across the way. There was a cool moment coming into Purcell Pavilion today. There's a women's basketball player here at Notre Dame, Dara Mabry, who obviously started her career in Blacksburg, suffered a really sad ACL injury that cut her final season short. First thing I saw when I came in the gym, around 12.20, Mike Young was giving Dara Mabry a hug. Hunter Couture came over to give Dara Mabry a hug. Those relationships continue to last. Once a Hokie, always a Hokie. You have to love that. Terrible stuff, though, Mabry. I mean, ACL is never easy, especially to come back from it. In your last year of college, that's tough. Irish women's basketball team will be home tomorrow against Syracuse. We saw your fellow Clemson alum Kelly Gramlich at the airport yesterday. She'll be on the call for women's hoops here at Purcell Pavilion tomorrow. ACC women's basketball is just bonkers right now. There's so many good teams. And obviously, the Hokies and the Irish are two of the best. Both in the first reveal of the top 16 teams in line to host March Madness games at Castle and here in South Bend, too. Poteet makes them both this time. But he gave a good he gave some good minutes off the bench four quick rebounds got to the free throw line a couple times embraced some physicality From Matt Zona Notre Dame's seldom used big man, but he was thrown in there today Notre Dame's gonna hold for the last shot look for Lejeski to come up and set a ball screen either a pick and pop or a pick and replace Down on the bottom with Dane Goodwin. Three second difference game and shot clock. Leshesky from the edge of the logo. Oh! In. Give him 20 in the first half. Nate Leshesky, it's his show. Padula to oh, beat the buzzer. Shot Padula. What you can do, sir, I can do better. The man from Edmond, Oklahoma, ends the first half on a high note for Virginia Tech. And I love it. A little pick and pop for Notre Dame. Dave Lejewski is feeling it. He Each comes team off and made. knocks it through. Both teams shooting well over 50% overall. What a game. Very few turnovers, as you would expect with these two teams. All right, can Virginia Tech get its first road win of the year, or will Notre Dame Improved to 10 and 7 against the Hokies in Mike Bray's tenure. Justin Mutz back to work, gets his own rebound, puts it in. Notre Dame showing a little bit of a matchup zone to open up the half to take away what Mike Young likes to draw up at the beginning of the second half. Good job, Justin Mutz, taking advantage of a mismatch and scoring over the top. And if you stepped away at halftime and are thinking, wait, I thought it was 44 to 40. They had an incorrect oh. score as Lachesky oh. continues his onslaught. So 45-43 is now the correct count. And Lachesky, six off his career highs. Got 19 minutes to get there. Tough pass, tough catch. Couture versus Ryan pulls it back out for Mutz. And the rebound, Goodwin. Just seems to be wide open look after wide open look for both teams. Lejewski continuing to get easier. Vasily dodges his third foul and gets the rebound on the miss from Lubin. Interesting matchup, Lubin and Basili each with two. Basili only played seven minutes in the first half. Coming off a 33-point game against BC on Wednesday. Lashesky has the mismatch, has a foot over Padula. My goodness. 25 for Nate. Three-level scorer today. Gets in the short post against a smaller Sean Padula, just says, forget it, I'm going to shoot over the top. He shoots threes, he attacks the bucket, he posts up. Lashesky answers him. What a game we've got. Back and forth we go. 
I think both teams might score 100 in regulation. That's the kind of game it's been. Lashensky, heat check. Oh, my! Uh, I would have shot it too, Evan. Lashensky, well over half of the team's points. He has been terrific. 28 for Nate. Mutz, turnaround, no! He shot that with no space. Let's see if he fires up another one. Goodwin looking for his first points instead, and he missed it right. Lashinsky with a little defense. Haven't seen a lot of it today, Evan. No, we have not. You get the feeling whichever team can turn up the intensity defensively is going to ultimately win the game. Right now, the teams are getting what they want offensively. I was about to say, first team to 90, Evan. I, I'm much more of a fan of that. Let's see if we get a quick pick and pop. But that leaves Cormac Ryan open. Ryan can't connect. But when one guy gets hot from the perimeter, there's going to be so much attention on him. Both players go to Lezhevsky. Nice cut. Collins, no good. Basili's tip in and out. Rebound finds Goodwin. We're tied at 48 still. It's our fourth tie of the day. And of course, Thursday, two days ago, was the 10th anniversary of that unbelievable five overtime game in this building, Louisville and Notre Dame. Nice finish by Hammond to put the Irish in front. Four minutes gone, second half. Bazzilli's open, buries it. It's a horse competition. That's what this game is settled into. Both teams knocking down shots from everywhere. Communication has to be key, though, and you have to guard the basketball. When that defense collapses, it's really tough. But on the flip side, Lezhevsky commanding so much attention that the paint has completely opened up. Help side can't come over. Each team's made nine threes. Inside to Lubin. He's too close to the basket. I think that might have been the issue. <laughs> That's exactly right. A little pick and pop. Oh, oh nice Padula finds Mutz inside. I like it. And that's where Sean Padula is at his best as a playmaker. In a semi-break, you have a little drag screen coming over, getting in front, and giving him an advantage play. And sometimes Notre Dame can ball watch. Justin Mutz sees that, takes advantage. Lashesky, one shy of his career high as Goodwin rises up and buries the free throw jumper. This day Goodwin being a veteran player. Come off the ball screen. You keep your dribble alive. And then what happens is the defense wants to stick. He gets to that mid-range level where he's really good and knocks it through. Both teams just taking what they want right now, Terrence. Bazzilli has 13 to match Mutz as the Hokies' leading scorer. Hammond finds himself open. In and out, rebound, Couture. It's been a shot-making clinic. But Hammond, I mean, even then, you know, that's a wide-open look right there. Oh, good help. Dane Goodwin, doesn't matter. Bazzilli scores anyway. It's a pickup game. What it feels like. <laughs> it feels like a pickup game. Both teams getting looks off their first option in the offense. Have not had a foul called on either side in the first six minutes of the second half, adding to the pickup flavor. Now I'm okay with that. Yes. No, no complaints here. Mutz. Offensive foul. How about Justin Mutz? You try to be aggressive, you're getting to the cup. Though. Putting on an offensive display. He's 10 of 13 from the field. Six for seven beyond the arc. Well, eight points to start out before the first media. I mean, that is high-level shot making. It, went, it rains, it pours for Lejewski. He That was a heat check on that last one. But this guy, whenever he gets rolling, a big-time shot maker from the perimeter. Take a look at today's max performance brought to you by Z-Max. 
He's one shy of his career high. No member of the Irish has scored 30 in a game since Matt Farrell did it against BC five years ago. I think it's a pretty safe bet that he's going to do it today. But really attacked from all over the floor. And he's attacking switches. They're switching one through five, so he's getting some mismatches in the mid post. He's knocking down threes on pick and pops. Now you're going to have a roll replace, and they're going to stop leaving him. Big time shot if you can make it. But who else? There's Lashesky with a 30 burger with 13 30 to go. A 30 burger? 30 piece McNugget. That too. That sounds better than a 30 burger, doesn't it? Here's Mutz pivoting and scoring inside over Lashesky. 15 for Mutz. And most importantly, the Hokies have a five point lead despite Nate's great offense. No longer leaving Lashesky. Is that one's deep? Missed it short. Second miss in eight attempts from three. Vasily and Mutz, though, have combined for them compared to Lejewski's third. So that's a big portion of that as well. Ryan the rebound. First miss for the Hokies in the last six shots. I like the addition of Matt Zona, number 25 for Notre Dame, into the lineup because he adds an element of physicality. He's a bigger body. Is well, he the most unathletic guy? No. Does he handle the ball that well? No. But he sets good screens as he hammers Couture, gets his guy wide open. Oh, and Trey Wirtz able to beat the buzzer with a clock winding down. Santa Clara transfer, Providence Day School out of Charlotte. Wirtz. It's a big time shot. Padula missed it. Lashesky pair hugs his sixth rebound. Irish tie it up at 59. That's what he can do. Get him in transition situations, and JJ Starling is going to finish. 6'4, 200 pounds. Evan, I, I mean, he has all the athletic ability one would want when it comes to bigger guard play in a Power 5 conference. Free throws coming from us with 11.25 to go. We've been tied five times. We've had five lead changes. Justin Mutz, an opportunity at the line when we come back, but we are even courtesy of the freshman, J.J. Starling. All right, everybody, it's two of any of these for just $6. Can I hammer? I don't carry my shillelagh on me. Not every day. Not every day. Only when the vibe needs it. I like that kid's vibes. As you said during the break, the Irish mascot is a jolly fellow. He is a jolly fellow. Look at him. Great school spirit here at Notre Dame. Entertaining back and forth game. Neither team is led by more than seven at any point. We're tied at 59 as Justin Mutz steps to the line and breaks the tie with a free throw if you like offensive basketball this has been very aesthetically pleasing a whole lot of shots made not a lot of defense played but my goodness shot making at a high level one for two for months Lashesky has a career high 30 points with a lot of time to add to it that's where you're going to see Starling continue to develop in a pick and roll. He keeps his dribble alive and hesitates. He'll be able to get all the way to the cup. Collins doing a pretty good job staying with Cormac Ryan. Lubin with eight to shoot. Doubled down. Kick to Starling. Three is short. A good block out by Kidd for the rebound. Hokies now switching at four spots. They have stuck Justin Mutz on Nate Lejewski trying to slow him down. Padula. Oh, the foul. Count it. Padula said, it's my turn. Long step, big time finish. Look at that last step is so crucial. And Sean Padula's lower body strength is really impressive. I mean, his ability to stop on a dime whenever he's pulling up for a jumper or take that extra long step when trying to step through the help. I mean, that's a big time finish. There's a reason he's 
averaging so many points per game. We chatted with him earlier this year. I think he's always had the ability, but the confidence has grown so much from where he was from the start of the last season to the start of this season to now. Just continues to ascend in that department. He's been remarkably consistent all season long. I mean, even through the last five games, he's averaging 15.2 over the whole season, 15.8. You know what you're getting from this young man. He's a bulldog, a pit bull, if you will, attacking the rim and trying to score. Made a three in 20 games in a row. Dane Goodwin has two points today. See if they can get him going. Ryan, straightaway three. Got it. I like it. He worked on that shot today after their intense shoot around. I think he shot close to 35 or 40, coming off that exact screen and knocking it through. And Padula, aggressive. Attacking off the dribble, earning two more free throws for the Hokies. But Cormac Ryan, he, he worked on this shot time and time again, coming off a screen, getting his feet set. And there's not a lot of wasted motion with Cormac Ryan's jump shot. He gets it high, the shooting pocket is up around his forehead, and he lets it fly. And he's been consistent that way. 11, 11 points for Padula. 37% on the year is Cormac Ryan, and most of which have been off the move. Padula's got a dozen. Hokies lead by three. What do you think is going to be the difference down the stretch, Terrence, as we head toward the fourth quarter of this basketball game? At this point, whoever has the ball last. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Padula. Pretty good hedge by Goodwin. Collins spinning, pivoting, scoring. Ooh. Making George Mike and proud. Jay Collins getting in, playing off two feet, staying patient, step through and finish. Broken nose and all. Leszewski swatted from behind by Mutz. But the foul is going on the smaller Collins. My initial thought, MJ Collins, you need to shoot this ball off the catch. You're wide open. But he saw a lane against a slower foot of Leszewski. Created a lane more than well, saw one. Well, that's right. He saw, an, he, he saw an open ocean. <laughs> yes, he did. Part of the Red Sea. Everything was there. Leszewski's first miss at the free throw line today. Coming up a little bit. Pass break presented by your local Ford dealer. Stick around for that. Coming up at some point here in the second half. One of two at the line. 31 points now for Leszewski in his 150th game as a member of the Fighting Irish. It has been a memorable one for Nate. Bazzilli inside, got it, and one. What a pass. They come out, they try to help, and hedge them ball screen, and Sean Padula is able to get it there over the top. An excellent read over the top of Lejeski's head, off of the bounce. One dribble and up, great catch, big time finish. Grandpa Silly extending out the lead. Hokie started the second half just two for nine. They're eight of their last ten from the floor, and they have their largest lead of the day. Important possession here for Notre Dame. Ryan, deep three, puts it in. My goodness, shot that from Chicago. Cormac Ryan's got 14. Four for six from deep. Whoever gets the ball last, Evan, is going to win this game. It's been a fun game. I'm assuming it's a fun game to play in offensively as well. Mazzilli, another chance for a three-point play. My goodness. Hokies getting whatever they want inside. The high-low on one side, but Cormac Ryan on the other. He's starting to feel it. A little between the legs action. You back up, I'll pull. Forget about it. That's a bucket. But Virginia Tech, the high-low. He seals up top. You get a switch. You finish quick. Marcus Hammond, that might be one you just let go. Entry passes to the post from the top of the key are the hardest to guard because the help side has to come so far 
Excellent execution by Virginia Tech, getting that look. Zilli's now got 21. Stretching the lead back to seven. Words using the screen from Lubin. Let's see what happens here. Ryan tries another. Oh! <laughs> How do you feel, quarterback Ryan? Smacks the ground. This has been some kind of special shooting display. Both teams on fire all game long. Mutz, first good win on the block. Taking what he wants again. Taking turns is essentially what's happening. I mean, if Notre Dame's going to win the game, they need to get some stops because they are few and far between right now. Hokies have made their last five shots. He checks central. Here we go. Cormack gives it up. Ammon turns it over. Only the fifth Notre Dame turn. Up high, Collins. Wow. There's a lot of contact. It was knocked out of bounds. It'll be Virginia Tech ball. Well, the president of the Cormac Ryan fan club is here, and Cormac's putting on a show for you. And that is me, and that is deep, and that is in. Virginia Tech up six, but not if Cormac Ryan can do anything about it. It is time for the Huggies game summary. With Virginia Tech leading by six. No shortage of shot making at both ends of the floor, Terrence. I mean, it's been basically two on two, and all four guys you see on your screen have hit some tough ones, but Virginia Tech is finding different ways to score, while Notre Dame is doing an excellent job hitting some tough shots, quite frankly. Virginia Tech has been a little bit more methodical. Doesn't have to be a lot more methodical, just a little bit more. Some high-low actions. Those two big men have been really good. Okies by six with the basketball out of the break. Okies two for six from three in the second half. They made seven threes in the first half, but they've done their damage inside. Outscoring the Irish 32-18 in the paint. And a foul going against Marcus Hammond. It's his third. Really like the Pokey's ball movement all game long. And that's a nice finish for Grant Bazzilli. What a baseline out of bounds play. That was scripted the entire time. That ends up in a cross screen for Bazzilli. And you have to maintain eye contact with where the basketball is, or else you're going to give up a really good angle. Excellent spin and finish for Bazzilli, but an excellent play draw by Mike Young. Chesky's got the size on Padula. Double comes, doesn't matter. Lashesky has 33. That's him attacking a mismatch of being the older player and keeping his patience, right? You spin to the middle, a little up and under, and now Notre Dame going a little bit 2-3 for a possession. How they've been destroyed inside doesn't surprise me. Mutz at the blind, Bazzilli at the rim! What a pass by Justin Mutz that got it there, but Bacilli. Dunks on everybody in South Bend. Six minutes to go. The Hokies have made seven straight <laughs> field goal attempts. The 2 3 didn't work, Evan. <laughs> Not that time it didn't. Wonder if they'll stick with it. Hammond kicks it for Ryan. He's been red hot. Air ball. This one stick back up and in, though. Then Allen Lumen, right place, right time. I look at the shooting percentages on the stat sheet. Doesn't it, make sense. It, it, it's, well, I mean, Virginia Tech shooting 61% in the second half. It feels more like 91%. Both teams. Bazzilli gets another. In front of his friends and family. He's been aggressive today, and for good reason. I, I mean, he has played terrific. 33 last game. He's got 27 today. It feels like it's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle. 22 here in the second half. He only had five points in seven minutes. Foul trouble in the first 20. Hammond answers. What a high-scoring ball game. Not using a whole lot of the shot clock either. 
Under five minutes to play. And yet Notre Dame has not been able to dig too deep into the deficit. They've been able to keep it close, but they got to get a stop. Virginia Tech is executing masterfully. <laughs> Unbelievable. Vasily's now got 29. A little stagger handoff set for Couture. What happens, one guy rolls, the other guy stays high. And it just seems like the high-low action for the Hokies has been there all game. Offensive execution has been terrific. Tend to shoot. Hammond, step back three, in and out, rebound Bazzilli. This game is coming down to which team can get easier shots more consistently. I know that sounds like a lot, but every time Virginia Tech comes down, there's a set that gets their guys wide open, and there's Couture. And there's another high-low. Bazzilli with the 10th straight field goal make for Virginia Tech. They're 10 for 10 in their last 10 shots. I thought it was the Nate Lezewski show. It's turned into the yeah, Basili show. He's upstaged them. 31 points for Basili. That's a good no call. That's a good no call. I thought Lezewski really sold it a little bit too much. This Hokie team really turning it on. Virginia Tech has broken it open. Their first double-digit lead of the day with 332 to play. Three and a half remaining here at the Joyce Center with Notre Dame trailing by 10 now. Grant Basili has absolutely taken over this game at the offensive end. Grant Basili is active, silly, and it's been cut away from the basket. Dunk, high-low action. Let me work a little bit. Quick layup. He's hit him for three, too, but it's been his work inside the paint against the Notre Dame team that doesn't have a whole lot of rim protection. He has flourished today for the Hokies. Second five, half. Five in the first half, 26 in the second half. Justin Mutz has nine assists in the game, several of them on that high-low action with Basili here lately. Hokies ball. Currently up 10, their largest lead of the day. Tend to shoot this trip for Padula. Working on Lubin. Needs help. Couture's open. Dagger three. In and out. Rebound Starling. Maintain some hope, but at the same time, you use the entirety of the shot clock. Notre Dame needs to try to score quickly here. Down 10. You can still make things happen, but it needs to happen in a hurry. Padula. Gutty defense there on Ryan. J.J. Starling's turn. No, Lubin, couple chances. Finally, he corrals it and scores. J.J. Starling, and here's the thing. You attack the rim like that, you draw help, and that opens up opportunities for offensive rebounding. Ben Allen Lubin, he'll clean that up. Couture's miss was the first field goal miss in Virginia Tech's last 11 shots. They're 10 of their last 11. Notre Dame needs another stop if they're going to cut this closer. Five to shoot. Couture bumped by Leshesky. Another offensive possession. You use 27 seconds. Notre Dame fouls. And now you're in one and one for Virginia Tech. It, it, this is a team, whenever they're executed, they're so difficult to guard. Mike Young runs terrific offense. One and one here for Couture. 72% at the line this season. He earns the second. We'll squeeze in a message from Coyote Tractor. In my experience, if you work the land, you got to be a jack of all trades. You got to have a little bit of optimism and a whole lot of get go. Two for two for Couture. Hunter's got eight points. The lead is ten. With two minutes to play. Starling missed it. Oh, Couture had both hands on the rebound, deflected it right to Lumen. Lumen getting in on the action. Showed some aggressiveness early. But attacking the offensive glass. Nine points for Lubin, tied with Hammond 
as the third Irish scorer behind Leshevsky's 33 and Ryan's 17. I would consider fouling right here if I'm Notre Dame. A minute and a half to go. You've had a hard time guarding them, and they're using so much of the clock. After this possession, Lubin right down Broadway. Six-point game. Mike Gray's telling them to play defense. If they fouled, it would be a one-and-one. See, now, even if you do get a stop, you're going to be inside 50 seconds. You haven't been getting stops. Late whistle, and MJ Collins will get three free throws. I'd, I'd love to take another look at that, and we're going to. Cormac Ryan a little too aggressive on the way out. Guys, that's a foul. I mean, d should it have caused him to fall down? No. At the same time, leave that alone. That's a good defensive possession. Can't happen. First free throws of the day for MJ. Makes it a three possession game by making the first. He's still got two more. MJ Collins, 71.4% on the year. Upcoming schedule for Virginia Tech, presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. They go to Atlanta from here, face the fight Josh Kastner's on Wednesday at McCamish. And home for Pitt. Obviously, Virginia Tech has little margin for error, but they are currently top 50 in Ken Palm. They're 55 in the net. They're still in the conversation, even at four and nine in the league. Trying to replicate what happened last year when they started two and seven and then rampaged on nine of their final 11 regular season games and then obviously had incredible success in the tournament, included a win over Notre Dame. Timeout call. We'll take it to 44 and a half seconds left after the three free throws from Collins. It's a nine point deficit for Mike Bray's Irish. At Hardy's, no matter what you Over the best, Bazilli and Leshesky each crossing the 30 point plateau today. It's been a lot of shot making from both guys. Leshesky in the first half, Bazilli in the second half. I mean, both inside out threats, that's for certain. But these are big fellas putting on a display today. Hokies have 90 points with 44 and a half seconds to go. You said first to 90, Terrence. You might be right. It's their most points in an ACC game all year. Oh, wow. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Out of the timeout. How does that happen out of a timeout? You lose track of your man. Baseline out of bounds set. An easy cut to the basket. And there was zero contact there. Well, that took uh, like 1.8 seconds off the clock. If they can get three points every 1.8 seconds. They can overcome a nine-point deficit and then some with 45 to go. Into Bazzilli, back to Mutz in the backcourt, and he's fouled. It'll be one and one for Virginia Tech. It's the ninth Notre Dame team foul. 41.1 remaining. Time to take a look at today's Protecting the Paint, brought to you by CPI Security. We haven't seen that much defense today, Terrence, but there's been a little bit. I was about to say, that paint, if it wasn't already dry, there'd be a lot there. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of defense, but that being said, Virginia Tech, when they get out and run, and MJ Collins, that's where he, he's at his best. Munch I mean, misses the front that. end of the one and one. Notre Dame still has life. Irish have made 13 threes today. They could use number 14 right here. Ryan looking for it. Mutz the rebound. And now it'll be two shots. I beg your pardon. That's This is the ninth team foul here. The previous one was the eighth, so it'll still be one and one for Justin. Quality look. Though. I mean, that's what you want. You want something quick. Top of the key. Cormac Ryan, he's been able to knock down some shots from the perimeter off the bounds. No dice on that one. But regardless, you need something quick. Justin Mutz needs to hit one of these free throws as well. Maybe a possession ball. Justin Mutz, a man of two master degrees.
18 points today, along with eight rebounds and nine assists. And he missed another front end. Wait, now they're saying we're at 10 fouls and he gets two shots. Mutz, one for three. Did it make him pick up the basketball? Big make though. Makes it a seven point game. Goodwin, it's a bad pass, it was deflected, that's why. 19.8 remaining Notre Dame ball. Bad pass, but that was a heck of an offensive set. A little hammer screen on the backside for Goodman to get open. That's one you need if you're Marcus Hammond. Get that ball to your shooter. Mascheski gives it up. Starling and the foul. Wow. Mike Young can't believe it. That's J.J. Starling saying, I'm stronger than you, sir. 6'4", 200 pounds, gets to his left hand. Nice penetrate kick. And he's just a big, strong guard, able to finish. Young man has a lot of talent. Now, a lot of times, high school seniors, they come in, they have this lofty ranking. You expect them to make an impact right away. It's taken Starling a little bit to get his feet wet. But really shown improvement over the course of the college uh, of the conference portion of the schedule. Four point game, 15 seconds left. Crazier things have happened. Basili will shoot two. 69% on the season. And over the last five games, 58%. But he just gets to add to his point total. I'd be shocked if he doesn't knock these down the way he's feeling today. Has shot a lot of free throws in his career. He's at 410 as he steps to the line here, trying to put this game away. Has a lot of family members here today, having 12 of them. What a good game to have a good game for him. No question about it. 120th game of his career. Always a good hokey contingent. They travel well. Timeout was taken by Mike Young. And they're going to sit down on the bench with 14 seconds to go. I mean, look, Grant Basili. Super Bowl Sunday. Bazzilli having a sensational Saturday. Makes both free throws. He's got 33. The match was Chesky's 33, and the Hokies have a couple of fouls to give, so why not use them? Ten seconds remaining. Look, if Notre Dame can make a three here, you never know. They really need a long-range shot. It's got 13 of them in the game. Another foul on Padula before they could rise and fire. Takes a second and a half off the clock. This is a nice job managing the situation by the Hokies. That's right. Try to 
cut it down as much as possible. You foul. Make them take as much time off the clock as possible. Leszewski takes it. No. Rebound. Virginia Tech. And it's over. The Hokies have beaten the Irish for their fifth straight time. Today they are up for 93 points and win it by six here in South Bend. What an offensive performance by both teams. 93 to 87. You don't see that all too often. Hope you took the over. Oh, no question. No question. Not a ton of defense being played, but maybe.